Hi, I'm going to get you the episode in just a second, but I want to tell you about something really exciting first. Transcendence, a transformative virtual retreat happening this November 8th through 10th. If you're seeking deeper connection with your loved ones in spirit, if you're on a journey to strengthen your spiritual path, if you're going through grief, Transcendence is designed just for you. We're going to have about 20 expert speakers. These are some of the best people in the world, and we're going to explore topics like mediumship, near-death experiences, connecting with angels, animal communications, signs from behind, even the experience of connecting with your loved ones in spirit. This is a live event. This is not canned. You'll be able to interact with the presenters. This is not just another event. It's really a chance to elevate your consciousness, expand your spiritual awareness, and connect with a supportive community who understands the journey you're on. Visit us at events.humanitix.com slash TVR. There's going to be a link below, but that's events.humanitix, H-U-M-A-N-I-T-I-X.com slash TVR as in Transcendence Virtual Retreat to find out information and reserve your spot today. Let's transcend together. I hope to see you there. Close your eyes and imagine. What if the things in life that cause us the greatest pain, the things that bring us grief, are challenges? Challenges designed to help us grow, to ultimately become what we were always meant to be. We feel like we've been buried, but what if, like a seed, we've been planted? And having been planted, we grow to become a mighty tree. Now, open your eyes. Open your eyes to this way of viewing life. Come with me as we explore your true, infinite, eternal nature. This is Grief to Growth. And I am your host, Brian Smith. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Grief to Growth, where we explore the deepest questions of life, like who we are, where we came from, and where we're going. And whether you're a first-time listener or a long-time follower, I want to thank you for being here. I'm your host, Brian Smith, and this podcast is dedicated to helping you navigate the challenges of life by gaining a deeper understanding of yourself and the world around you. Today, we have a truly special guest. Her name is Cheryl Murphy. And Cheryl is an accomplished evidential medium and psychic who has spent over 20 years studying metaphysics. Her work involves channeling messages from departed loved ones and helping people make meaningful life decisions. She's also a certified hypnotherapist, health and wellness intuitive, and the founder of the Healing Prayer Circle. In today's episode, Cheryl will show insights into some fascinating topics, such as the difference between a psychic and a medium how connecting with loved ones and spirit can be a healing experience. And we're going to dive into Cheryl's journey, including how she grew up and became a psychic uh, with their, with their own family's uh, background, their mother and her aunt. Well, I don't want to spoil too much of that. We'll talk about that uh, as we get into the episode. We're also going to explore practical tips on how to connect with your spirit guides. And she'll explain the importance of uh, setting your intentions and staying open hearted when you're communicating with the spirit world. And she'll even reveal some ways you can start tuning into spiritual messages yourself and discuss her energy transformation program. So get ready for a deep conversation about the power of spirit, the healing nature of mediumship, and much more. And as always, I encourage you to continue the conversation in our community afterwards at grieftogrowth.com slash community, where you can listen to more episodes, engage with other listeners and with me. So with that, I want to welcome to Grief to Growth, Cheryl Murphy. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here and, and have this conversation um, about mediumship and spirit connection and and all those things. And we were talking before we started recording. Um, there, we were looking both look at some statistics that might be surprising to people about belief in the psychic and about belief in spirit world. So, could you share that with me? What your experience has been with that? You know, growing up uh, psychic and growing up as a medium. It's always been more about women being intuitive or women being psychic. Maybe it was just more comfortable or more mainstream in some way. But now, uh, fortunately, more and more men are becoming sensitive and opening up to their own abilities, asking some questions, leaning into it. And that's really all I ask of anyone is to approach mediumship approach developing themselves intuitively and psychically come to it with this approach of an open mind and an open heart and i i really feel with that gratitude and the appreciation of what you're getting ready to step into this power of love or divine love that it really will deepen your 
connection with yourself in the world today, but uh, it really will connect, uh, strengthen your connection with your own guides and your own angels. Yeah. Well, you know, we were, we were talking also um, about men and women uh, and our experiences. Um, it was interesting because in yeah. this a study we saw it said that more men mm-hmm. believed in the psychic world than than women and more men were apt to take psychic advice which kind of goes against what my personal experience has been but you, you've been in this for longer than i have have you seen men changing when it comes to spirituality i have and it started with uh, my brother actually you know uh, all the women in my family are psychic um and now growing up with my brother, he was extremely intuitive, extremely psychic. Actually, he and I practiced our psychic uh, seances growing up uh, when we were five, six, seven years old hmm. in our house because my mom had uh, books in our house, you know, that you never heard of before. I mean, Edgar Casey. not many people talked about Edgar Casey back then where nowadays, I mean, he's mainstream. I mean, thank God the sleeping prophet um, – you know, took science experiments and documented what he did Mm -hmm. as far as going into that deep trance and being able to help people with illnesses or foretelling the future. Uh, But working just with my family alone, I've seen the men in my family become more intuitive. And when I went into uh, professional practice doing this full time, I definitely realize more and more men are stepping into the field. They're more, they're more acceptive of, of the gut feeling, you know, they're just simple things like that. They're more accepting of I'm feeling this, or I'm sensing that, you know, a mm-hmm. long time ago, men, you know, maybe didn't, uh, they held their feelings back or they were more reserved. Uh, but nowadays, fortunately they're kind of coming more into it. You're seeing more and more men open up and becoming healers, becoming light workers, um, really getting into the altered states of consciousness. And uh, thank God for that, because we need uh, men in our, it, we need men to be just as intuitive as women coming up. Yeah, well, you know, I always wonder about stuff when there's differences between men and women, how much of it is biological and how much of it is society. And I, and I, I think most of it is what society does to us we're, because we tell little boys, you know, don't cry, don't, we, we kind of drive the feelings out of men and make it unacceptable. So it's great, great to see that men are stepping more into this. Yeah, it's, it was more, you know, environmental, as you're saying, uh, you know, right, they would tell, you know, men not to express their feelings, where my brother, fortunately, and more and more men today, they're opening up to the sensitivity. And I really feel like in some way, it's strengthening the power on the planet. It's helping to raise awareness around our own abilities as co-creators. Mm-hmm. So I'm so grateful that men are stepping into the field and asking me for more readings. I do a lot of readings for men around uh, connecting with loved ones, their fathers, their mothers. Oh my gosh. And I connect, I help men connect with their own intuitive abilities through training. They, I mm-hmm. think they're, they're surprising themselves knowing that they're intuitive or they're psychic. And then also I help men with um, like health and wellness questions too. A lot of men, they're maybe afraid to ask um, a doctor a question, for example, but intuitively they want confirmation or validation from a medium, so to speak. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. 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 I come from a medical, I come from a medical um, healthcare background, uh, but I never really planned on helping people medically. It never was more of my uh, forte, so to speak, but it became more because spirit started, you know, steering me that direction. Mm-hmm. So not only do I connect with loved ones and spirit, Uh, or uh, psychic questions about people's lives, what's happening right now in their life, but also helping people with, uh, I call myself a health and wellness intuitive. Um, Also that animal communicator uh, is starting to open up also more in my Mm -hmm. life. And what happens is, um, you know, when spirit opens you up, they bring the people, right? So there is a need for that. And that's what spirit's goal is. You know, if I could just share with you that spirit came to me very strongly uh, the angels came to me and really told me they, in the middle of the day, I had this awakening feeling. I was um, not working at the time. They came to me in the middle of the day and say, and said, Cheryl, rather than doing this part time, because I was just doing it on the side, so to speak, mm-hmm. we need you to step into this full time. And it's as if they picked me up from my T-shirt, from my sleeves and dropped me into a lifeboat. And they said, look, we'll help you. We'll help you gain that 
uh, you know, uh, attraction will help bring people to you. Hmm. But we need someone to be a voice for us. We need someone who we can work through, so to speak, or who we can work with. Like, And if you think about it, it is true. I do believe that's why there's so many mediums or healers, light workers these days, because the spirit world, the angels, the guides need to get their voice to cross. They need hmm. to come through a way that's subtle, that's loving, and how wonderful to receive a reading from a medium, you know, that can be life changing. Yeah, right? absolutely. So yeah. I'm curious. Um, I know you 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 said you started off your background. Your your mother is psychic, and your aunt uh, is psychic. Um, what was your experience as a child? What was your experience of spirit? Yeah, you know my my uh, my experience as a child was when I I think I was around three years old, and. But when I would sleep at night, there would be a golden ball of light in my room. Not every night, but I do have several memories of it where a golden ball of light would uh, float into my room. Mm. And it was as if it was a family. It was a family of spirit. It's a family of mine, but from another place. We'll just call it that. And they were coming in to check on me. It was very encouraging and uplifting. There was definitely never fear, nothing ever afraid. It's as if they woke me up to say, hey, look, we're coming to check on you. We want to make sure you're okay. Hey, you're in a good place, right? This is going to be fun. It's as if they were preparing me. And mm -hmm. after a few visits, they started moving objects in my room. They'd move toys around or move posters on the wall, so to speak. And I had that experience, you know, a few times I'd say, up through my childhood for about a couple of years into my um into my teenage years right so in the teenage years is really when i decided look i've got to find these answers i know people are asking these questions i'm asking them too mm -hmm. i want to be able to help people i knew i wanted to study you know um metaphysics uh, I wanted to study mediumship, psychic, anything that had to do with our guides and angels. So I knew from a very early age that was my path. Wow. wow. And tell me about your your mother's abilities. You know, it's great that you ask me that because my mom is extremely intuitive. Um, she's an actress uh, or a retired actress here in California. Uh, but she used her abilities a lot when we were very, very young, just to kind of keep us, I guess, on the straight and narrow with her being a, a single mom of four, of four children. Mm. Uh, but there came a time where she said, I'm not going to do this anymore. She went more into the acting field, uh, but she uses her intuitive abilities there. I know I went, you know, channeling characters and working with um, other actors as well. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you the acting field, the actors are all very intuitive. Uh, they're very in tune with, you know, trying to um, take on another character or the behavior of someone else. It's as if they really want to get to know other people. And it's through these actors or through these uh, people that I met, my mother's friends, that I realized also there are so many people out there that have questions about the spirit world, about where do we go? Uh, where are our loved ones? Do I have these abilities? And that's my job or my goal is to really help people understand this is a it's a natural form of being who you are, of being the spirit that you are. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, uh, something about your your aunt or your great aunt. Yeah. What was this? What was that? Time for a real quick break. Make sure you like and subscribe. Liking the video will show it to more people on YouTube. And subscribe, you will make sure you get access to all my great content in the future. And now back to the video. It's pretty amazing. So I have Cherokee in my field, in uh -huh. my, I mean, in my ancestry. It's very mm -hmm. interesting and Irish. Uh, my great aunt was hired by the Air Force. Um, back in the day, you never heard of these things. Like I didn't hear about it till I got a little bit older, mm -hmm. but she was hired by the Air Force to find a missing pilot and plane. And they came to her, the Air Force came to her uh, at her home and asked her if they, if she would help them. And she goes, you know, I'll help you, but I just want to let you know that the pilot's already dead. You know, do you still want me to help you? And they said, yes. Oh, wow. So she ends up helping them and researching for them and finding this missing pilot and plane there. Uh, you know, the pilot's been ejected from the plane. It's in a snowy mountain here, I believe in this country. Uh, but it was a very... It was a very well kept secret up until right. you know I became a little bit older to understand, and you would never have heard this back then. And right. so they did find the missing pilot and plane. Amazing! It was in the mountains back, you know, when there wasn't radar or it wasn't that good detection. Right. Right. Now, was this the U.S. military? 
Yes, it was yeah. the government, right? Yeah, it's it's really interesting to me because I I have a lot of friends who are who are mediums, and I know sometimes the government actually does approach them for various things, but then the government's always denying it, you know. And even some there are a few de police departments now that are working with mediums, but they will they won't make it public. Absolutely, and you know I even volunteer for a, a missing persons. Uh, organization called hmm. findmegroup.org, uh, where a retired police officer, law enforcement, started this organization to help find missing persons. Oh, really? Or even solve, yeah, even solve cold cases. And so he uses anyone that will help. So a lot of mediums or intuitives uh, help him. Also, retired law enforcement help him as well. You know, law enforcement are very intuitive. They yeah. always have to look in front of them and behind them and assess the situation, so to speak. So they're intuition or their awareness is quite open so yeah. really it, it's pretty impressive i have some medium friends who are also retired law enforcement that's interesting because um do you know have you heard of nikki allen no i haven't so nikki allen is a is a medium in, in england and she was in law enforcement before she went into mediumship and she she talks about how she used her intuitive abilities when she was in law enforcement you know and people were like how were you solving these cases? You know, so, uh, yeah. it, you know, and acting. So there's that intuitive ability we can use in a lot of different fields. Yeah, we can, you know, you know as law enforcement, um, my friends, they they used it to, they, you have to anticipate what's going to happen next, right? You have to look in front of you and behind you. Sure. And I, and I know, as we know, nurses use their intuitive abilities. They're healers. They use that in their day-to-day -day life. And mm -hmm. even musicians, right? Musicians you use their intuition and their, uh, psychic abilities, uh, you know, to hear the music or to hear the song. Uh, you know, Billy Joel, as you know, uh, he would go to sleep at night and wake up with the song in his head, right? So right. He just had to right. write it down. Uh, I, there, that reminds me, there was a story that Prince, I guess, called up his band one time. It's like, get to the studio. Like It was like three o'clock in the morning. And they're like, well, what do you mean? This, this can't wait. He goes, no, because if I don't get this out, Michael Jackson or somebody else will um because yeah. this this stuff comes through through that intuition so it's really interesting as we're having this conversation i'm thinking like you, you it's almost every field you you know you can use your intuition yeah you know even uh interior decorators you have to almost if you're decorating your house for example you have to imagine what what it could look like mm -hmm. right you have to so in some way you are using that clairvoyant ability so you could say interior decorators would use their clairvoyance mm -hmm. musicians would use their clairaudience their hearing their psychic hearing uh absolutely and nurses would use their clairsentience they'd use that open heart and compassion element uh, yeah. To help you. yeah, yeah, really interesting. So, um, you had this this uh, spiritual experiences growing up. Your your mother's intuitive. So, I, you and your mother, I supposedly spoke about this. You were open. What field did you go into? You said you didn't go directly into mediumship as a full time thing. Yeah, you know, I started off in psychology. You know, I went the traditional route for a while, right? Mm -hmm. So I went and uh, got my degree in psychology, which I absolutely love. And I used that to help me understand people more or used it how to work with people in my business. Mm -hmm. uh, and then with that uh, psychology degree, I went on and studied because I went and studied uh, more alternative uh, methods of learning how to connect. Or So I started finding schools that I was interested in or that mm -hmm. I'd go to and learning from other like-minded people because Brian, that was always the hard part of being a medium or psychic was telling someone or who else can I hang out with that's going to understand me, right? Or where is my tribe? So I would sign up for classes uh, because I knew that other people had the same interests. And that's mm. really how I started taking classes is I was looking for a tribe, a group. And then that was really, I hit a home run because I found, you know, just the most lovely people in this field. And yeah. um, I really feel fortunate for that. Now, was there ever a time where you said, I don't want this. So you set it aside because I know a lot of people, especially when they start seeing guides and spirits when they're very young, there comes a time where it's like, I just want to fit in, you know, go away. 
Did you ever have that experience? Yeah. I did. I did. I mean, look, uh, I, I'll tell you, when I was very young with my brother, of course, we would get scared when the wind blew in and there was no window open or when the lights blinked. I mean, it's very true. But in hmm. the same time, it's um, it's also a very loving energy that we just didn't understand at the time. And then I also remember when I was studying this, I was really deep dived into mediumship and psychic ability. It's almost like meditating all the time. That too has become, that was too much at the time. I think I was in my twenties when that happened Mm -hmm. where I'm like, you know what? I just have to walk away from it for a while. I need a break. And the spirit world said, look, it's fine. You know, that take a break. And I really do think it's healthy. I Mm -hmm. think, I think people need to find that balance in their life where they're meditating as something to help them with rather than meditating to get away from other things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, again, I, I've I've heard so many people say that as part of their their journey, because a lot of people like myself that don't have those experiences, like, oh, wow, I wish I wish I could have that. But when we come here to be human, we're supposed to have the human experience as well. And I've heard many people say, well, I just told them go away, and maybe even for a couple of decades. Absolutely, and always, uh, what I learned most from doing that was we all have the exact amount of energy in our body. We don't have too much and we don't have too little because the human body um, is very fragile, right? And when we're doing a lot of opening, opening, opening with our energy field, uh, we can really get out of balance in some way. Mm. And you want to always want to practice grounding. And that's really the main thing I teach my students or anyone that I talk to. One of the first lessons I'll always teach is how to stay connected to Mother Earth and how to find that balance of working with this energy and then realizing it's also here to serve us and to help us co-create. So we always have that ability to manifest. Yeah, well, I think that's a really it's a really important thing. Um, that as you, as I love the way you put it, and I believe in balance in pretty much everything. So as I said, we all it seems like a lot of times we want what we don't have. So people like myself, it's like oh, I really wish I had this ability, but I know other people say it's it's you have to balance it, right? We have to work with it because um, we can't stay at that level all the time. Absolutely. And the more sensitive you become in this field, the more sensitive you have to practice self-care or the more important it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And to really realize that, you know, there is something to all of this. And with that, you know, once again, with that big responsibility, we have to practice how we can enjoy our life uh, using the spirit world or working alongside the spirit world to help others, but also to live our life of our own joy and fulfillment, knowing that spirits with us all the time and to take it one step further, uh, we're in the spirit world, you know, so you and I were spirits and we're in this beautiful vibration of all the spirits around us, you know, of the heaven with us. And it's when we keep that vibration high and full of love, uh, and it doesn't happen all the time. So we can't hold that energy, like you said, but we do find that new balance to raise our vibration to those levels where we can, uh, be there more so than not, so to speak. Yeah. Now, I know we were talking about sensitivity. Um, I know a lot of times people, again, once you have that that higher vibration, you're, you physically become more sensitive to things in this world. Like uh, I know people very sensitive to air, um, to the food that they eat and uh, the, the thing, the energy is being around uh, negative people or people say, I can't watch certain movies. Have you had that experience? I have I have that experience and I know many people that do especially around the EMF you know the electromagnetic yeah. fields mm-hmm. you know all the Wi-Fi or, or or the radio waves that are out there people are very very sensitive to it also just using you know um you know um, ingredients for their laundry like use trying to use more natural ingredients than synthetics you know even the foods they eat trying to eat more organic when you can or trying to eat more vegetables so to speak and fruits mm-hmm. but trying to eat or drink cleaner water if you can. And look, exercise is number one. It's always got to be number one around walking every day or or going to the gym or taking up some type of physical activity uh, because the body can really help. You know, it's be, it's all about being in the body and being grounded to the planet. That's where our power is. And mm-hmm. we help, we ask Mother Earth to help us, right? To help heal us or to help bring us any energy that we need to get through the day or to get through uh, whatever challenges we're having. 
So, yeah. you know, old, yeah, old school used to be like, let me leave my body and transcend and I'm going to go off and astral travel and what have you. But nowadays it's about being in the here and now, and it's mm -hmm. about the simplicity of life and knowing that, you know, you came here equipped as a spiritual co-creator. Uh, it's not about we are without any ability. It's almost as if we're unfolding those abilities. Hmm. Wow. Interesting way of putting it. So let's go and cover some of the basics. You, um, what's the difference between a psychic and a medium? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm testing out a new feature. I'd love to get your feedback on it. It's called Fan Mail, and you can send me a message right from the show notes of the podcast. So look for the link that says send me a text. You can ask a question for a future podcast. You can suggest a guest or just give me any feedback you want. Just remember, it is one way I can't text you back, and I will not have your name, your email address, or your phone number unless you include it in the message. Let me know what you think. Well, a psychic works soul to soul just as a medium. A psychic is going to work soul to soul with someone here uh, on the earth plane, so to speak, that's having questions around, you know, any questions around career, finance, you know, health, health and wellness, um, moving and relocating, relationship readings, love relationship readings. So a psychic reading is has to do with someone who's having um, current situation or questions, concerns in their life right now. Maybe mm -hmm. they're feeling stuck. Maybe they want to learn how to raise their vibration. Maybe they want to develop their mediumship. But and as a psychic, I can see that in the aura field, in the energy field that surrounds the body. So in a psychic reading, I'm working soul to soul with the person I'm sitting across from. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from a mediumship standpoint, I'm working soul to soul still, but I'm working with a departed soul, someone who's crossed over. But it's still the soul to soul connection to show the survival of the of um, our physical consciousness, of our love that we have, of our personality. So a mediumship reading is raising our vibration to allow the spirit world, allow those who are loved ones, who are guides and angels, as we blend that energy. We, that's what a medium does is we blend energy with a power greater than ours to bring through, uh, you know, messages of love, of hope, of healing. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very profound. Now, you've heard the saying, um, every medium is psychic, but not every psychic is a medium mm -hmm. because the medium does take on a, a bigger power, so to speak, or a higher awareness. There is more preparation, I guess you could say, not to take anything away from psychics. There are amazing psychics out there oh, and yeah. they do lovely, lovely work. Um, and they do just psychic work. Like even tarot cards are a uh, psychic work, but you could be a medium doing tarot as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, I love doing mediumship work because it does allow me to do both psychic and mediumship. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask you in terms of your preparation for for a, a reading whether it's psychic or mediumship how do you how do you prepare yourself yeah so every so when i i always say that the actual reading has started as soon as the client schedules the appointment because the intention has been set the mm. universe knows that that client has signed up with me for an appointment so in my preparation i do sit and meditate i do always open myself up I ask for my clairvoyance, my clairaudience, all my clairs to open up, the clairsentience, the feeling and the, the knowing, any way that I can be of service. So I sit with meditation and I really, um, I really, when I speak to someone, I want them to be at ease and I want them to be comfortable with me, right? So I may speak to them for a little bit before we begin the reading, trying to put them at ease. You know, a lot of people may be afraid or they've never met me before or they've never had a reading before or they've never connected with their loved ones before and it's their first time or maybe they're just, they're in grief, right? We have a lot of people who are in grief that I've helped that they just need that connection you know we need that love to know we need our loved ones on the other side to know that we're here for them mm -hmm. 
and so that's what I do is I prepare through meditation. I prepare through sitting in the power is what it's called, where we open up our own awareness to the higher power, so to speak, or to the universal energy of uh, unconditional love. And, you know, setting the intention follows that where I ask always for the highest good to come. Mm -hmm. I ask for the highest good to come for all involved in this reading and may only the most appropriate information be given, but uh, messages of healing of anything that will help the um, person I'm working with in today's reading, right? Because the reading that you receive today could be different next year when you see me, right? Uh, and I do have people that see me, you know, monthly or uh, annually, every birthday, so to speak. Uh, maybe if someone's going through a tremendous amount of grief or a transformation in their own life, I will see them a lot during those times. Oh, really? Okay. And do you do anything to quote unquote, protect yourself when you're going into a reading? Um, very, very interesting. So there is that question of, uh, protection and do we need protection? Um, so I will say that, um, I, I will say that my intention comes from a place of love and light. And within that love and light, I feel guided that I'm serving of the highest good. So there is no fear or any feeling of needing a protection, if that makes sense, right? It makes, yeah. Makes perfect it's, sense. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. I happen to agree with that. It's it's really interesting because people have different views about that, about whether they require protection or not. I, I think you answered it perfectly. I think it depends on what your your intention is. And as you've said, you've been sensing spirits since you were a small child. Have you had any any um well, you mentioned wind blowing when the window's not open. I guess that could be a little bit scary. <laughs> No. Have I had any amazing paranormal experiences? Or yeah. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 yes. We've always had those experiences where the books are falling off the shelf or the doors are shutting or the voice, you know, we've heard the voice or the lights. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I've had that off and on uh, either with myself in meditation, but mostly when I'm working in a group uh, environment or with someone else. Mm -hmm. That's usually because it is the energy that's um, built in or concentrated in a group effort, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so whether, yeah, when I did readings for a group, so to speak, uh, I was I was at someone's house doing, I think it was a party, a birthday party, for example. I did readings for eight or 10 people. And afterwards, the lights blinked and the book that fell off the shelf was the architecture book that would never would have fallen they're telling me and the person that we were channeling or speaking with uh that was their book for example oh, wow. that was their gift to mm -hmm. the to these people I was working with so you never know you never know and um I always want to say once again it's about being open to signs from the spirit world right mm -hmm. uh, spirit sends us a thousand signs every day and it's really up to us to kind of remember that we ask those questions. We ask for the sign. Yeah. Well, thank you for that answer. Um, and it, the thing is, you know, when it comes to fear, a lot of us, uh, we've been taught to fear paranormal yes. by movies, by religion, um, who tell us, you know, don't consult with mediums. And so we do. When something happens, instead of being excited about it, a book falling off a shelf or hearing a voice, especially, that's that sounds scary to some people. It does. And, you know, hearing that voice um, can be subjectively or objectively. So in my work as a medium, for example, I can use my clairvoyance in my mind's eye. That would be subjectively. But mm -hmm. if I saw it outwardly, like if I saw something outwardly, that would be an objective way of using it. And mm -hmm. yes, see, that's the thing is, um, yes, Hollywood and everyone does a lot of a really good job of creating the fear around uh, mediumship or psychics and make it very, they make it very woo woo or you know very scary to where you don't want to get the reading and really people even of um a religious faith of whatever faith that is that can actually keep people from seeing a medium once again right or you know or a psychic mm -hmm. but if you if you are if you're ever in need or if you're ever if you ever have an experience of loss or grief or an interest in it that little door opening can put you on the path to seeing what's out there to explore what's out there. 
Mm-hmm. I have, for example, I have a family who lost their son and they never would have seen a medium or a psychic at all until their son crossed at 11 years old at a very young age out of the blue. And they found me, I was living in Colorado at the time and, um, they drove for hours to come see me. It was just amazing the links they went to, but for some reason they felt drawn to, to go, all right, mm-hmm. to come see me. And it was, it was, you know, an amazing experience to where I'm still working with them the, to this day. Uh, but that put them on the track that or the path, right? I said the track, but it puts them on the path mm-hmm. uh, to find out more. And now they themselves are reading all of these books, asking all of these questions and opening up their their own consciousness, their own hearts, their own light to the abilities and really being open. And now they're having their own communication, you know, with their son that passed. Right. And that's really the gift is I always tell people, you know, if anything, I, I want you to be able to connect to your loved ones and you do have the ability. So I'm hoping that I can assure people or teach them or coach them that yes, you are seeing that, you know, that aura around someone's uh, energy field, or you are hearing that voice, or you are receiving that message or that sign. That's really the goal is to have people understand that they have that ability themselves. Yeah, that's a really, really great point. And I've I've had the opportunity because of the work I do, I, I've worked with several mediums in different capacities and to, to interview the clients of several mediums. And yeah. it's really fun. In fact, I just had one earlier day, I was interviewing her about her experience with this medium over the course of several years. And her face just lights up when she talks about the experiences that she's had and and the growth she's had and, and the learning. And she's like, it's not about just even getting the readings or the evidence. Like mm-hmm. my whole life has changed because I've been opened up to a whole new world. So yeah. I understand what you're saying about your client, you know, that that tragedy that opens us up to opening the spirit can be a door for a spirit to really just walk through. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi there. I'm really excited to tell you about my latest ebook. It's four lessons that you can learn from the near death experience without going through all the trouble of dying to learn them. I've been studying NDEs for several years now. I am completely convinced that not only are they 100% real, but that there's some very universal wisdom that we can get from the near-death experience. And I've distilled that down in this book into four short lessons. And I've also given you all the reasons why I believe the NDEs are absolutely real. So go to www.grieftogrowth.com slash NDE lessons to pick it up for free www.grief the number two growth.com slash NDE lessons. I hope you enjoy it. Absolutely. And uh, if I can share with you, I have another client, a very good friend of mine now, but um, he came to me and he had a lot of physical pain from having been in a car accident uh, about a year before I met him. And he mm-hmm. had a lot of, you know, back pain, neck pain, he wasn't able to work anymore, uh, depression now, right? Because of the, and on medication. And he came to me asking for help. He had never really even heard of what this is all about. He just knew that he had to call me. And it was through working with him uh, over the phone, really uh, over the phone uh, is how we worked because he was in another part of the country, but we worked it teaching him how to connect to his own angels and guides. And it was, it was as if the spirit world and he himself were becoming empowered, knowing that to follow his intuition, he didn't have to take so much of one medication or so much of a pain pill, so to speak. Like he was able to create a wellness and a healing within himself because he felt his own power to heal and he felt his own guides and angels helping him heal. And so even to this day, you know, he's still on some medication, but the the numbers are way down and the amounts are way down to where he's so much happier and so much healthier. Mm-hmm. Really, that's what it's all about is living that happy and healthy, joyful life the best we can. Yeah, I think that's a great story. And and there is so much power that we have within um that we're we're not taught to tap into. And the fact that you're helping people to to make that, that connection, I think is awesome. I did want to go back to, cause I asked you how you prepare for a reading. Um, how would you suggest a sitter prepares for a reading? Mm-hmm. I do have a page on my website uh, that talks about how to prepare for a reading where I share with people 
first off, finding a room or office or even your car. I've done a lot of mobile readings, um, but is to find a quiet place, all right, Mm -hmm. number one, where you won't be disturbed. Now, if you can meditate or say a prayer, it's about spending time uh, with that breath and with asking for help, right? Sitting with yourself, sitting with your own guides or asking whomever it is you want to ask the universe, your loved ones, asking them to be with you during this reading. Always having water to drink, uh, light a candle is very important because once again, I believe it reinforces the intention that we're setting, right? What are we doing here? Why are we about to, uh, you know, embark on this mediumship reading or this psychic reading? What is mm-hmm. the intention here? And then to be open about it and to understand that, look, um, we have to be open to the messages that come through uh, because spirit uh, may say something that we had, you had no idea, or you didn't even ask for, but they answer a question that you didn't even ask, but that you wanted that answer to. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it can be very, very amazing work. It sounds to me like the, what you're saying is the sitter is actually a part of the, the, the reading of, of the, of the experience, I guess I, I want to say, because I know I've, again, I've worked with a lot of me and sometimes people walk in and sit there and just go, okay, do your thing um, mm-hmm. to the medium. So it sounds like to me, you're saying you've got to be ready yourself as the sitter. Yeah, truly. I mean, I've had people uh, in in a in a public demonstration, for example, where I've been in front of 100 people at a time and you'll see the person sitting, you know, with his arms crossed in the back row, like, you know, show me or prove to me what you're saying. And what happens is it can block the energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, for someone that comes to me, I do want them to prepare because it's a beautiful orchestration of spirit it's the soul of the medium the spirit and the person the sitter so it's that beautiful trinity of energy that's working and when when it's all dialed in or when it's all in harmony the the readings can really be heartfelt to where the sitter can feel that and that's a goal of mine too is to have them look can you feel their love do you feel the presence do you feel the little tingling on your fingertips but yeah the sitter has to actually come once again with the open mind and be present right be present so they have to be um open to any messages. And look, it doesn't happen easily. It's a practice. And even if you didn't, even if you make the smallest attempt to being a good sitter, it opens a thousand doors. So don't feel like if you come work with me, it has to be all or none. Mm Because I've worked with people over time where um, the readings have gotten deeper and deeper because they have become more comfortable with the energy or with the whole process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for people that, I mean, we all hear, okay, we've got guides, we've got angels, and some of us will say, well, I've never experienced that. I've never, you know, where, where are they? What are they doing? How do we start to make that connection? How do we reach out to our guides and angels? Yeah, it's such a great question. And I just want to say that, you know, we have guides for, you know, a reason, a season, a lifetime. We all have guides that we've come into this world Uh, being born. We've come in with guides that we've already known. We meet guides along the way in our meditations. You know, I I had a guide come to me in my recent meditation uh, to help me with something I was working on. Hmm. Uh, So I believe guides can come in and help you with the project you're working on or a new hobby or whatever questions you have. Angels, angels are absolutely around all of us. They're here to support us. They're here to uh, bring us uh, more love and light into our lives. There's angels of harmony and healing, you know, angels of balance. We even have finance angels or angels of finance. You know, when you need to manifest money, ask your angels, so to speak. Hmm. Um, But how do we connect with these guides and angels? It is through uh, asking, number one, we always have to give them permission to work with us or to, you know, come closer, so to speak, and give Mm -hmm. us a sign or a message. But I do say, look, ask, meditate if you can. Uh, or at least sit for five minutes even. But mm-hmm. it is to think about them through the day and talk to them just like we're talking now. Tell them your problems. Tell them what you're working on. Tell them your frustrations. Tell them what you need help with and ask them. And always ask them with gratitude. Ask them with compassion. Ask them with reverence for your help uh, or for their help. Uh, because I know that for every, you know, every wish we have, 
uh, there's an angel for us. I don't believe we have a limited number of angels and guides. I think we have many angels and guides. And I think that some of us share angels. For example, Archangel Michael, he's very much on the planet right now, helping a lot of people. So it's very common, I think, for angels such as that to be uh, working with many, many people. Mm -hmm. There's a group of friends of mine that we work with an angel, uh, an angel called North Star. And it's interesting that this angel is all of our guides because the four of us all get messages from that one angel. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's very validating. Now, yeah. that when you said that, uh, brought up a question for me because I've heard sometimes people will say what we call an angel is actually a collection of spirits or souls or whatever term you want to use. Is that your understanding or are they individuals or what, what, yeah. what's your understanding on that? Well, I do believe once again, our departed loved ones can be a guide for us. Mm -hmm. I do believe in some way there are angels on earth to speak of that. I know we've all had hopefully some experiences where it just had to be a miracle that an, an angel in human form stepped in front of them to help them out or get them out of harm's way. Right. I don't know if you've had that experience, but I definitely had that experience on the road, um, helping me veer off or a car keeping from hitting me. I've had those experiences. It's only when we look back on that 2020 that we go, wow, I must have, must have been guided or protected right. because, I mean, there was just, it came too close. Uh, but I do believe that, uh, yeah, a collective of angels is fine, but I'd like to believe that and also open it up to also angels come in for the sole purpose of never having really been on the planet before, so to speak, but have always been of this higher consciousness or of higher of service, this higher healing ability to instill in us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to be be part of a collective is fine but i i'd like to open that up to even more yeah so when um in your experience do you think the the people are becoming more uh in tune with with psychic ability with going to see mediums with trying to open up touch our angels and guides and if if so what's what do you think is driving that uh, I do believe it's becoming more comfortable because people are becoming more comfortable about the whole topic uh, and they're learning more of it, whether it's through television and or some movies are very, very good right now. And other other shows like Gaia's and your show, your podcast is helping to open people's awareness and compassion up to to even believe because, you know, that door was closed for so long and now it's open to where people can at least believe it and have some doubt, which is perfectly fine, or have doubt and be a skeptic and come into this with a lot of questions. Because the more questions you have, believe it or not, the more it opens your ability to receive the answers, right? You want to be curious about all of this. So I believe a lot of people are becoming more comfortable. Also, ever since like 2020 or maybe even before COVID, uh, you know, people are becoming a little bit more afraid, either financially or what's happening with the world these days. And it's really had to push them into a corner where they've had to create. They've had to be inventive. They've had to kind of think their way out of the comfort zone, so to speak. Now, with everybody at home around that 2020 year period, for that year or two, I do believe our energy fields opened up. I think our auric energy field opened up even more so to where we were able to even uh, tap in to receiving messages. So I think even without any training or knowing, it's almost like, wow, I do feel more intuitive. I do feel more in this higher alignment or higher awareness. So a lot of it had to do with, you know, economic reasons. A lot of it had to do with that 2020 field, but also where we're heading to, we're all heading into this fifth dimensional, you know, reality of higher consciousness of more divine feminine energy coming through, which divine feminine, it's all about being creative. It's all about compassion, unconditional love. It's all about healing and co-creating with the universe. So there's just this natural yearning or this natural blending, this natural opening and awakening that people are having. Yeah, I I hope you're right. I think you're right too. Um, you know, the thing is interesting because we talked about earlier your client that came to you after their son passed, and a lot of times it's that something has to drive us to the point of of making a change, 
and 2020 COVID, I think is a big thing. There's a lot of turmoil in the, in the world right now. And, you know, people are frustrated. They're like, what, what can I do? Because, you know, this is going on or that's going on. And what, what I'm seeing is people are finally starting to say, okay, I, I can't trust this institution or that institution. I need to turn within. And I think we're seeing more of that. We are, and especially also in the medical industry, right? You know, whether you can't afford insurance or you don't have insurance or you're not sure what to believe anymore. And, you know, so you you have to start opening up to in, the intuition of your body, you know, of your own health. We have to be our own advocates, right? So now right. we are going to uh, other healers or we're looking at different methods of Tai Chi or Qigong or acupuncture, acupressure, uh, Chinese herbs, uh, uh, naturopaths and functional medicine. Other ways, uh, not to not to not to ignore Western medicine by any means, but to find other complementary ways of providing healing for ourselves, and realizing that we have a say in our own healing ability. Yes, yeah, I think very much so. And um, so, yeah, you know, the the turmoil that goes on in the world. A lot of times, of course, none of us like it. We, we like for things just to be really calm and peaceful. But it does, it does. I think start to to open us up, and so um, when I when I see people turning more to, to mediums, turning more to alternative healing, going to someone like yourself and saying, you know, okay, I'm not going to like you said, you talk about your one client, or I think is a great example. Don't throw out your medications and just say I'm going to you know do this, but you know, find a doctor that's open and work with them, and mm -hmm. maybe see if you can cut back on some of those things. Yeah. You know, I know Western medicine is spiritual in its own right. I mean, we have to understand that everything is here for, for our higher well-being. And it's really how we use it or how we understand it. And to realize that there's many more avenues that we can take. And I think that's what this all is happening right now, is we're understanding that, look, uh, just grounding yourself and understanding your own mind over matter, so to speak, or the mind-body connection, understanding that our thoughts are things, you know, understanding right there about how if we can use affirmations or how we treat ourselves, how just being kind to yourself, right, and showing kindness in your own thoughts of caring for yourself uh, it presents caring for others and learning about the universal laws, right, of what goes out comes back, right? That mm -hmm. golden rule, what we send out comes back and understanding that there is something to all of this. There is something to it's as if physics uh, is catching up with metaphysics. Yeah. Well, you know, as we're talking about medicine, I think it's really interesting when drug companies want to bring a, a drug out, they have to do a trial and they always have to do a, plac a placebo. They have to do like, we're going to give this group the drug and this group we're not, we're going to tell them we're giving them the drug, but we're not going to give it to them. And every single time the group that gets the placebo has some positive effect and they have to prove that they're getting more of a positive effect from the drug than the placebo. And sometimes it's the opposite. It's like, so there is something to our minds, you know, thinking something that we can, we can heal our bodies. Oh, um, yeah. You're reminding me of Larry Dossey. I mean, Larry Dossey, amazing. He did a great experiment. He's written many books on this topic. Uh, he did um, he did some scientific uh, research on the power of prayer. And mm -hmm. we could actually do the power of prayer for someone in the hospital room and how that would actually, he, could, he was able to actually prove that that would uh, provide healing for that person. So it's amazing, uh, this power of prayer, the power of energy, right? The power of thought. And really there is something to that. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I, I created the healing prayer circle that I also hold that's on Sunday nights. But I hold it, I, I hold that, um, Brian, because I wanted people to find a community of like-minded people, just like when I was struck, you know, I couldn't find one back when I was learning this stuff or when I was l looking for people like me. Um, but so I provided this healing prayer circle so people could understand the power of prayer and meditation but not only just a little bit, but on an exponential level, because mm. when you do it in a group environment, whether it's two people or more, uh, once again, it's an exponential power that I think I think is good for someone who's very new to this or wants to learn more or is just interested in what it feels like or learning about manifesting, so to speak, or healing mm. to be a part of. 
because in a group environment, sometimes it can be even uh, really profound where you do feel it much more than just yeah. on your own. Because on our own, we might have a doubt or we might not put the time into it. Yeah, well, as we're, ta we're talking about this, it's, I feel like I'm kind of we're circling back, back around where we started in terms of the uh, the study we talked about with people believing in in psychic ability, et cetera. Um, and what I always try to encourage people, and anyone who's listened to me for any amount of time understands that there is a lot of evidence for these things that we're talking about. They they do work, and we've been told, well, if since we don't know how it works, there works, therefore it must not work. But I have talked to too many people who are medical intuitives people who are energy healers, people who've had Reiki. Um, and it does, you know, it does, it definitely works. So mm -hmm. I was uh, just at a conference a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about crystals and I walked in this shop and they're like, well, this crystal does this. And, and my engineering mind is like, well, that can't work because I don't understand how it works. But um, that's really not a, that's not a very scientific um, mindset actually, just because we don't know how it works doesn't mean it doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me. So test these things out, you know, See yeah, a medical be, intuitive. Yeah, be experiential about it. And that's one thing that I've always wanted to do. I've wanted to experience the spirit world. That's why I've you know, traveled around the world, so to speak, just trying to take different classes or learn about spirituality in different cultures. You know, Brazil is an amazing place to learn about uh, spirituality and healing and channeling and trance. Uh, but yes, learning about it through experience and just to share with you, um, you know, I felt stuck at one time in my life and I needed to get unstuck. I'm like, hey, I should know how to do this. How am I going to do this? And I used affirmations to pull me out. I used the vibration of affirmations to actually remind me to raise my vibration and to blend with that higher way of approaching my outlook or a way of approaching my day uh, with knowing that healing is going to happen. You know, this too shall pass. Things will get better every day and every way I'm stepping into more love. But mm -hmm. just surrounding yourself with the energy of love and light can really lift you up even out of a depression or feeling stuck or feeling like you're not sure of what you're picking up as far as being an intuitive. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great advice. And I think that's a that is a a, a rational way to approach things is to to try them out. So, you know, we were talking about meditation earlier and you said, you know, to meditate, you know, if you can, um, I would, I encourage people keep trying ways of practicing mindfulness until you find something that works for you. It's going to be different for everybody, but I truly believe unless there's, you know, truly like something physically wrong with your brain that everybody can find some sort of way to practice mindfulness. It's through, uh, you know, in, in simple tools, like we mentioned, uh, practicing mindfulness, taking a walk, sitting for right. five minutes, uh, lighting a candle, um, you know, using affirmations, uh, taking a Tai Chi or a Qigong class is a beautiful way to understand the body's energy and what energy is around you. Or even taking a class on how to develop your mediumship or psychic abilities, your intuition. Taking a class and being around like-minded people is really a confirmation or validation of, hey, I'm not the only one that has these questions. Or, hey, I have those questions too, but I'm, I didn't want to ask them because I thought it was just me. So, you know, being in a group environment, being around people who understand what you're going through or what you can do, what potential that you are, that they are seeing that's opening up within you it is very validating. It's actually very comforting and uh, absolutely very supportive. Yeah. And speaking of taking a class, I've done a little bit of uh, mediumship training, just kind of informally. You don't have to want or um, have aspirations of being a professional working medium to take a mediumship class. Um, you can start to just tap in your own abilities just by, you know, taking one casually. Absolutely. There are so many medium uh, mediums out there that also teach. Mm -hmm. And we absolutely know and we want people to come because we uh, that are just doing this for perf uh, personal reasons, for example, just for themselves or for them and their friends and not wanting to do it uh, professionally. Because we know, we know the outlook and the potential it has to open up their whole life right. into the possibilities of what they're able to manifest and create. You know, a lot of times people want to know, well, why am I in this, why is this one relationship always turning out to be the same? Uh, I see a pattern in my relationships. They're never working out. Or why is my job, you know, I'm always going into the wrong job. How do I see it differently? Well, we, hopefully we can help you understand 
through you tapping into your own higher intuition, what is it that you really want in your job or in your relationships and bringing that into your awareness, you know, bringing that much more into your life. Wow. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about your energy transformation membership program and how people can, can get involved with that? It's a monthly program that we hold uh, the first and third of every uh, month. And mm -hmm. we work with prayer. We work with the energies of what's happening in our environment today or what's happening on the planet today. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'd like to teach or share other students in those energy transformation sessions is to help them become spiritually fit and spiritually aware. For example, we work on balancing our chakras or releasing anything that we don't want out of our energy field. We open our awareness or our mind's eye to really connect more with nature and with that higher calling of who we are. So it's kind of like a spiritual fitness class, mm -hmm. but we do it through conversation. We do it through meditation. Uh, we do it through even remote healing that I hold every other month. So that's always a special treat that I get to offer to people is mm -hmm. to sit with them with my healing guides or with uh, teaching them how to perform that also, how to do remote healing. Oh, wow. So where can people find out more about you, Cheryl, and all the great things that you offer? Well, my website is uh, mediumcheryl.com. And I'm on the social platform also with Facebook and Instagram uh, at Medium Cheryl. Uh, and then people can reach me on my email. That's Cheryl at mediumcheryl.com. Awesome. Any last things you want to share with the audience before we uh, before we close out today? You know, I've been on, uh, I would love to invite people to my healing prayer circle on Sunday nights. That's yeah. always free to join and to check out the healing transformation sessions. Of course, I will be starting back my podcast where I've been taking a summer off, but I'll be starting back that in the next uh, month here. So please tune in or sign up for my newsletter and I'll be sharing that um, podcast with people coming up for the fall. But I just want to wish everybody well and know that, you know, it is within our hearts that we do have all those answers. And I know people are having a, a hard time right now, or they're struggling. And if they are, if they haven't reached out to a friend yet to please reach out to someone, but to also ask your guides, ask your angels for help and to be open, uh, because I know that they are going to send a sign of love and compassion of, and of healing. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks for being here today. Hey, thanks for having me. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Hey there, if you like this episode, come on over and talk about it. Let me know what you liked. If you didn't like this episode, come on over and talk about it. Let me know what you didn't like. Go to grieftogrowth.com slash community and look for talk about the podcast. I'll see you there.